um, thank you everyone for uh, joining us uh, this evening um, for a phone discussion uh, of uh, When Mona Lisa Smiled. Um, my name is Zach Alwitri. I'm the Associate Director for uh, the Islamic Studies Program here at Stanford. Uh, we're hosting this event as part of the Stanford Global Studies uh, Summer Film Festival, which has uh, gone online uh, this year. Um, we are showing seven films over the course of the summer um, around the topic of love in the time of cinema. I'm, I'm going to introduce um, uh, our moderator for today, who will um, hand it over to um, our guest, who is the director of the film. Um, uh, so Dr. Uh, Ranzi Salti uh, is um, a lecturer in Arabic at Stanford, um, and he's been uh, with us since 1999. Uh, he earned his doctorate in comparative literature from the University of California at Riverside. Um, during his time at Stanford, uh, Dr. Salty has uh, taught uh, countless undergraduates, uh, graduate students, faculty, staff um, in Arabic, um, and he's uh, amassed uh, many awards for his teaching, including the Dean's Award for Distinguished Teaching, the uh, Student Union's Award for Teacher of the Year, um, and uh, the John S. Knight Favorite Professor Award on several occasions. Um, he is the author of a collection of short stories uh, called uh, The Native Informant and Other Stories, Six Tales of uh, Defiance from the Arab World. Um, he is also the host of a radio program and podcast called Arabology, um, which uh, maybe we can also share a link to this, uh, Colin, if you don't mind. Um, so this podcast is um, Dr. Ramsey uh, interviews many famous uh, artists and actors and writers and poets uh, from the Arab world, um, and it has a big following um, all over uh, all over the globe. Um, so with that, I'll turn it over to Ramsey, um, who will um, introduce our uh, speaker and uh, take your questions. Assalamu alaikum, marhaba, hello, bonjour, uh, in any language, I'm so happy to see so many people turn out, uh, some people I, I think I know, some people I don't, but either way, thank you so much for coming to this, thank you for watching Fadi's film, and uh, Zach uh, made a mention of, you know, I, interview, I have interviewed many quote-unquote famous people, uh, but Fadi Haddad is one of those director, one of my favorite directors, editor and I haven't had the chance to actually interview him on my radio show so as we say in Arabic subhanallah that I get the chance to combine the request by the Abbasi program and by Stanford Global Studies who wanted to show a film that they thought would be worthwhile about love uh, about uh, you know it's, it's just to me it's beyond categorization this film when Mona Lisa smiled at Mona Lisa and so Fadi hello sahla feek welcome uh, uh, I know you are you're all the way in Dubai where it is 7:30 a.m. Uh, I'm in California where it's 8:30 p.m. and uh, and I'm sure that our attendees are from all over the world so that's what's nice about Zoom you know that's that's Absolutely. one good thing about doing yeah. this uh, through Zoom Fadi I mean I'm going to introduce you so now you're going to have to you know, listen. Uh, sure. Basically, I just wanted to say that Fadi G. Haddad is an assistant professor of film, TV, and media production at the American University in Dubai. He mainly teaches screenwriting and production courses for film and television series, and he mentors graduation projects. Through a diverse experience across filmmaking, the filmmaking uh, field since 2010, Fadi has worked as a director, as a writer, as an editor, as a creative producer for many feature films and short films. And the film that you, that I think most of our attendees saw and came to ask about uh, is his debut feature film. It's called When Mona Lisa Smiled and it premiered at the Dubai International Film Festival back in 2012. Uh, originally, it won the Critics' Choice Award in Oran Arab Film Festival in 2013. The film then got released in Jordanian cinemas and on pan-Arab televisions. Fadi is currently a PhD candidate in the Communication Studies program at the University of Antwerp. His doctoral research is focused on pan-Arab television series and 
and transnational Arab identity. Uh, I found this online, Fadi, and, and I, if there's any updates that I need to add, free, feel free. But either way, ahlan wa sahlan and welcome. To it's a pleasure to, uh, to be with you. No, that's all. And I, um, I'm really happy to be uh, with you today. And um, I'm really grateful that all those people uh, uh, turned out and uh, watched the film, I hope. And I hope they liked it. And I'm ready to answer all your questions. Great. So again, um, we, we're going to be checking, we're checking questions that come in through the Q&A function, as well as ch questions that may come in through the chat. So people should, be, feel, should feel free to do either. I have got two questions already. Uh, oh, three questions already, Fadi. But before, can I ask the one question that I've been dying to ask? <laughs> Yep. What gave you the idea to do this movie? I mean, it's just, it, it stands up to time. The story is global in some ways, yet so Jordanian in other ways. How did this come about? How did you, because uh, you, you not only directed it, you edited it and you wrote it. So this is your baby. Yeah. You, you know, Ramzi, uh, you know, as a creative person, you also write stories and you know that, um, you know, it's a, it's a very messy process like there's no linear you know way to uh come up with a story it's just like it accumulates you know from uh several sources but i i remember that i was um i'm all i've always been fascinated with characters and um and i i like uh i like to build on stereotypes like i like to start with the stereotype and then kind of explore it um in 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 some way or another and I wanted to write a comedy a romantic comedy and and I thought about this stereotype about Jordanians you probably know it uh, we we um, acknowledge ourselves as like a very serious nation or like we don't we don't smile that often I don't I don't necessarily agree uh, but like to some extent that's the stereotype that is common about us and that we kind of accept and we uh, we also laugh about um, and then in Jordan, there's a big um, uh, Egyptian labor community uh, that is, you know, part of the everyday life. And I, I remember like one day I was thinking about how we never saw uh, a love story between a, uh, a Jordanian and uh, Egyptian, although like, you know, they're, they're everywhere. Like, you know, people interact on a daily basis. Um, and I thought about that, and then I remember what I what I like about characters and stereotype. And I was like, okay, so if we get um, uh, Jordanian women who, for some reason, uh, does not smile at all, and then Egyptians, on the other hand, they have all uh, like the opposite uh, type of kind of stereotype, where you know we know that Egyptians are generally you know jolly and and they're happy and they have a great sense of humor. So I thought, you know, that's a good combination that that could, uh, you know, lead to something uh, interesting. And then I also remember that I uh, read something in the news and that's like the real part in, in the film, which is that um, someone applied for, um, for a public sector job and then she moved on in life and, you know, years passed by, years passed by. And then, you know, like she had, you know, she got married and she had kids and everything. And then uh, she got accepted. She got like the approval for the, uh, for that job. And I thought like that was funny, you know, uh, and I don't know if that happens all over the world or it's just like a third world thing. But, you know, it's funny like that you apply to a job and then you move on, you forget about it. It's like, you know, I, you know, you don't even believe that it will, um, uh, you know, like that, 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 that will ever happen. And then at some point, you know, when you're somewhere else, when you've, you know, built your career in, a, in another direction, suddenly, you know, you get a call, I don't know, or like an email or, a, and they tell you, or you read your name in the newspaper. That's what happened with that lady. She, she read her name in the newspaper and was like, you know, you got a job in the public sector. And, and, um, and, you know, I combined all of these things. If you watch the film, you see that it's, it's bits and pieces of things that I've heard, uh, you know, like um, later on when I, when I ex expanded the film and I added more characters, I like each one of these characters is built on someone that I either know or someone told me about. And of course, you know, you dramatize, you add, you know, your spices to everything, but 
it's like a combination. It's like a mosaic of uh, people and stories that I've heard. Um, and that's what I, what I like about storytelling, about film, cinema, is that uh, you, take, you take things that are trivial, or at least that's, that's my taste in, in storytelling. Like, I like to tell stories about things that you knew, you know you would read in the newspaper or you you know hear or see you know, on your way uh, to take the bus or something and then you know you explore that and you expand it and you uh, create a story out of it. Love it, thank you. Uh, so Fadia, the a very interesting question here. It starts with a comment and, and goes into a question. Here, here you go. There seemed to be something particular about the area of the city where Mona Lisa and her sister lived. Some kind of subtext that local people would perhaps automatically understand. Can you say more? P.S. That person who asked the question says, I loved the film. Shukran. Thank you. Um, yes, well, um, of course, um, like, you know, many cities, uh, Amman has, has a gap, like there's, there's a social gap between at least two area, two main areas, East Amman and West Amman, where West Amman is, you know, like the upscale, um, you know, more serviced, uh, it's the, the newer part of, of the town. And then there's um, and then there's uh, East Amman, which is uh, older. It's you know poorer. Um, there's you know plenty of um, maybe even refugee camps, Palestinian refugee camps in, in a couple of places. Uh, so in general, it's it's less privileged. And of course, you know, in such uh, circumstances. Um, you know, people don't have the luxury to uh, just be themselves, you know, like, you know, you would do when you, when you are more privileged, of course. Uh, there's a lot of things that people have to think about and have to, uh, and of course, you know, like geographically, um, the houses are much closer to each other and people meddle into each other's lives because, you know, because of the um, physical environment, you know, you, you could be, you know, in your kitchen and hear, you know, like your neighbors talking or something. So there's, there's this thing that um, um, storytelling wise helped me, but also uh, in terms of, uh, you know, visuals and, and cinematically, I thought like this is, I felt like this is where the story should uh, take place. Uh, later on, when we, um, when we were scouting for locations, we found this, you know, beautiful area. Uh, of course, like I'm seeing it beautiful because I'm looking through the lens, but, but of course, like it's, a, it's an area that uh, suffers, you know, a lot of problems, but it's called J Jabal al -Nadif. Um And, uh, and we, we found it and it felt like this is where I want the film to happen. Uh, so most of our film happened in that, you know, in, in East Amman, uh, although a lot of uh, also uh, um, uh, interaction uh, in that film happens in uh, downtown Amman, which which is an area that I love because it's kind of the the meeting point. You know, this is this is where um, it's it's technically probably part of East Amman, so it's like more um, how do you say that? Like shabby. It's more um, popular. Popular. It's more yeah, popular. popular. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, at the same time. Uh, you know, like a lot of people go through it on their way to go somewhere and it, it becomes like this meeting point or melting pot. And, um, and also that's because like in the, in the backdrop of my story, I wanted a man to be a character because I think this is an interesting city. It, it hasn't been featured enough in film and TV because, you know, in Jordan, the filmmaking scene is still emerging. But I feel like there's a lot of stuff that makes... Amman, a special city and, and a different city than uh, the other Levant or uh, Arab world uh, cities like, you know, Cairo or Beirut or Damascus. It's, um, it has a character of its own and I wanted that character to be part of the story. It's like the backdrop of the story. So, um, so, so just to be clear, uh, the house that you were asked about, that was in Eastern Amman, Amman al -Sharqiyya. Yes, and there's a the part where, where they Lisa. go, where Mona Lisa and Hamdi go to the other side, to West Amman, and we feel like they feel like they're 
tourists. Like they're yeah. they're in yeah. in a town in a part of the town that doesn't include them, and that's sad. You know, that's that's the reality right. Uh, right. of our you know um, city. But um, I wanted to, to to show that somehow in the film. Yeah. Uh, Fadi, uh, this comes from a Jordanian who lives in California. I'll say the initials AQ. And, uh, and, and, and the person begins with, thank you for creating this masterpiece that reflects so many aspects of social norms in the Middle East. This person has a question for you. Interesting one. If you were to shoot the film again, what would you do differently and why? Oh my God! <laughs> I, um, I don't know if like if, if people are familiar with this, but you know, uh, creative people we're very um, we're very harsh on ourselves, and we um, we we are our you know meanest critics. And there's a lot of things that you know from from usually like you know in in a film like you as a director would go to to set and then. Uh, you know, wrap the, the shoot day and then go home. And then when you're sleeping, you're thinking about things that you should have done uh, <laughs> differently. I'm, I'm happy with the film. I'm proud of it, of course, uh, the way it, it is. But also, you know, um, it's been now, what, like um, nine years. I've, as a person, I've grown, you know, I've changed. I've become um, uh, more uh, experienced. Um, I wouldn't necessarily change uh, anything in the in the f in the in the way the film is, has been made. But of course, like if I if I'm going to make the same film now, it's a different time. I'm at a different you know mental state. Um, I think um, I think if I were to make the film today, it will be different. Not because I want it to be different. It's just because I'm a different person now, and the time we're living now is different. There has to be. You know, I have to reflect all the nuances that happened um, from, you know, the year uh, 2011 till today, which is a lot. Like when you think about it, the Arab world, you know, has turned around, you know, like, you know, the Arab Spring and everything. There's so much that happened. And I think, you know, um, film, even if it's not about that, even if I'm not making a film about, you know, um, like the revolutions or about uh, politics, uh, all of these things are nuances that have to be um, present in the film, even if implicitly. Yet the film stands the tense the test of time. I mean, when you say it's 2011, I think a lot of people are surprised. It is not dated at all. It's just, it feels as vibrant today as when you, when I first saw it a decade ago. Okay, so you have got a, uh, an, an attendee whose initials are CB. Um, here's what she says. I love the way the office environment was depicted. How did you come up with uh, the character of Mona Lisa's co-worker? the one she shared the office with that's quite a character how did you come up with it with that character <clears throat> you know that's that's something like that's a theme you know, that i i wanted to tackle um first of all um in jordan i know about that because i've experienced it many many times you know when you go to a um, public sector office governmental office um it's like it's like a parallel universe, you know. I don't know. There's there's something about how these those places function uh, and the kind of people there. Of course, you know, I um, as a human, you know, I give them all all kinds of excuses because, of course, you know, it's not a it's not a very inspiring job. Maybe uh, people are generally like very demanding, you know, like the clients and and. There's a certain character, there's a certain vibe that plays. And, and I think that's something universal. You know, it's different in each country, but uh, I'm always surprised like whenever I see a story, even in the States, you know, that we think that maybe um, it's different. I, I, I think, you know, there's that vibe in any uh, public sector office that is the same. You know, when you go there, you feel like you have to fight, you know, to get something done. Um, However, um, when I wanted to give Mona Lisa this job that she got, you know, many years after she applied to it, I wanted to be so insignificant. It's like in a in a governmental office that even like you know the the state had forgotten it existed. 
So I created the character of the coworker, and um, and I created this, this dynamic between her and Mona Lisa because uh, because she feels like she owns this place, and now this you know uh, strange girl with a strange name. Uh, who is going to, you know, um, start dating an uh, Egyptian? You know, I'm I'm saying this in this way because like that's the way that she would think about it. Uh, there's there's this feeling that she owns a place, and then there there are all these intruders, all of these aliens that uh, are trying to change, you know, her her world and her reality. And you know, maybe we hate her in the beginning, but then you know, towards the end, we kind of understand empathize where she's coming yeah. from, empathize, we understand yeah, where she's yeah, coming yeah. from. And I think, you know, I just want to say this because I, I, I gave like a very long answer to a simple question probably. But I mean like, you know, at this time, all around the world we're suffering with or we're struggling with, uh, you know, um, like, uh, you know, like the word seems to go back to conservatism and, um, you know, like xenophobia and, these kind of things. And I think um, what I wanted to do back then and I, what I still think uh, that I would want to always do is like to try to understand why people are afraid uh, from each other. Why do they feel threatened? It's not going to uh, excuse them, of course, but it just makes us understand, you know, the essence of the problem. Right. This really segues very well into two questions we got. I mean, it's almost prophetic that you were speaking about it. One is from um, H. L and one is from a pseudonym that begins with an R. But I think I can combine both questions, Fadi, for you. Um, first of all, for HL, I get I got some Arabic. We get to, we get to speak Arabic, Fadi. Shukran jazilan yurjibuni al film kathiran andi sual. What a beautiful, interesting that they have a question and beautiful typing in Arabic. Um, so I'm going to tie both questions in because uh, HL's question is: Is there a particular reason that you've chosen? Jordan and Egypt in the film, which ties in with a very frank, very powerful question that says, do you think Jordanians are ready to face the fact that they may be prejudiced against Egyptians? So I think you can answer both questions yeah. in one answer, right? Very yeah, thoughtful yeah. question. I, I kind of answered the first part, uh, why Jordan, Jordan, and of course, why Jordan? It's because I'm Jordanian. I, I want to tell stories about things that I know the most. Um, and, you know, most filmmakers do this. Um, and uh, why Egypt or Egyptian character? Um, as I said, because, uh, you know, uh, Egyptian community is part of everyday life in Jordan. There's no way that you are a Jordanian that lives in Jordan and you don't deal with Egyptians uh, on a daily basis. Uh, and I felt like because, you know, Egyptians are part of our everyday life, I'm sure, you know, a lot of G Jordanian women, uh, and they're generally like, you know, it's a male community, uh, the Egyptian labor in, in, uh, in Jordan. And, um, most of them usually are there without, you know, their families. Um, so, um, you know, um, I imagined, you know, this kind of uh, romantic encounter. And it's not easy, of course, you know, because, and that's something that we, we never mentioned, you know, explicitly in the film, but, you know, the Jordanian women uh, who get married to foreigners, uh, they don't, um, you know, they don't give them nationality. They don't give their children the nationality, the citizenship. Not yet. People are, you know, uh, there are lo a lot of activists who are working on this, but it's still not a reality. And of course, you know, when you're privileged, when you have, uh, you know, a good income, you don't worry about that. But when you're from that part of the society, it's, it's, it is an issue. Uh, so this is, this is why, and of course, you know, because of the stereotype and, you know, Egyptian uh, jolly uh, man with like a grumpy Jordanian woman, that's the kind of combination that I talked about before. Um, whether Jordan, Jordanians need to hear that uh, there's prejudice. Do you think that it's changing? Like, are they facing the fact that this kind of prejudice exists? And I think, do you see yeah. it changing, perhaps? Um, there, there, ha there have been, you know, since then, uh, since the film was made in 2011, as I said, but it was released in, in, two, in 2012. Uh, and since then, it's been like, what, eight, nine years. 
a lot of things changed. Now there's, uh, of course, you know, the social media influence where people, you know, it's like a, uh, um, it's like a two-edged sword, uh, sword, you know, on the one hand, it's um, people, people can dump anything they want to say on the social media. So I think, uh, you know, on the one hand, we started realizing, you know, there's a lot of prejudice there's a lot of you know negativity there's a lot of people who just you know don't feel ashamed to just go on you know on a on a post and just write any um racist um uh or or prejudiced uh thing on the other hand you know because of that people became aware you know at, you know like any conservative society we we tend to uh, like to believe that things don't exist, you know, we just swipe them under the carpet. And with the social media, I think we, to some extent, we um, we can't do this, you know, like when you see something online, it's there, it's there forever, you know, they can see it. So, um, yes, people are starting, and there were, there were other films other than When Moniza Smiled that also kind of tackled this. Uh, so I think, yes, uh, to answer the question, I think people have become more aware of this, whether negatively or positively, but I think positively because like once you know what you want, you admit that something is there, even if it's a problem, that's a huge part of the, um, you know, solution. Uh, so uh, how better or worse it got? I can't really say, I have to be honest, I haven't been living in Jordan for the past um, eight, nine years. You're in Dubai, uh, we should remind I mean, everyone, yeah. you're Jordanian, but you live in Dubai. Yeah, so yeah. I, I'd like to believe that there's more awareness, there's more consciousness about things that are okay and that things are not okay. Like I remember, you know, maybe like 10 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, we used to joke about things now, when I think about now, I'm saying, you know, like, this is bullying, you know, this is um, politi political incorrectness, you know, there's, um, there's a lot of things that, you know, in the past uh, 10 years, there's a, there's a culture of uh, awareness and of, uh, you know, consciousness towards things that we uh, kind of took for granted before. And I think people now have become more for, for the, um, for, for, you know, the, the worse or the better, they've become more aware of things. I think so too. Uh, Fadi, we're going to shift gears because uh, now you've got these kind of questions that talk about your favorite directors. We've got an amazing attendee whose initials are BC who loved the film. For example, here are some comments. I'm going to put them all together and then you can answer. Now, this is Fadi, the director here. Um, for example, the interior lighting seems very natural because it's not noticeable and some shots have a Wes Anderson feel. Uh, some shot, and, and that ties in with other questions like what directors or writers do you find most innovative and who overall has influenced your art the most? And I would also uh, tie that in with one more about who are your film influences? What directors do you emulate, if any? What cameras were used to film this? And what was used to edit i'll leave it to the director here i know nothing okay i'll put all these questions together and try to think of an answer it's always difficult when someone asks me about like your favorite film your favorite director there's so many you know great content in and great films that i have right. watched but that, maybe that a few influences yanifa yeah, diva kid yeah like I'll, uh, I'll think about <laughs> yeah like what comes to my mind um uh, at this moment i um there are the you know i i always um i'm always in love with like films by for example pedro almodovar uh, and it was probably one of the films that i took a lot of um you know inspiration from you know like when we start working on film and we want to communicate you know our vision with uh, you know our team we have to show them things like we have to show them you know like a screenshot or like a frame from this film or that film to communicate this and uh, there's something about the world of uh, El Modovar's films that I love in the way he creates characters. Characters are very uh, bold, are very daring and, and also that is reflected in the mise-en-scene or in the like visual elements uh, that we see in his, uh, in his movies. 
uh, from the Arab world, from from Egypt, because um, you know this is a film that also kind of um, you know uh, finds in- inspiration in Arabic cinema. Right. Um, I love the work of uh, Muhammad Khan, um, and and it was uh, also you know one of the directors that I was inspired in this film. And, um, and, and what I love about his work is that, um, of course, you know, you know that he, he passed away, unfortunately, but in, 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 in his uh, latest films, in the most recent ones, um, it's like, if you see the film and you don't know, it's made by Muhammad Khan, who's like a person, an experienced person, you know, he's uh, somehow old. Um, you don't guess that it's made by a person of that age. It feels so young and so um, experimental, and that's what I I love about his uh, his films. You say Masrallah, um, Wes Anderson, of course. You know, like uh, <laughs> some you know some shots and like the way um, the characters kind of uh, dress or talk. Uh, so yeah, like there's, there's many in- inspiration and references in the film. Uh, it was shot on, um, Canon 5D Mark II, I think it was. Uh, so it's, uh, it's not a cinema camera. We didn't have the budget to shoot or we had, you know, we had a limited budget. So we had to make a choice whether to spend, you know, all the money on, you know, like a, uh, big camera, but we... We had uh, we had a great team. I, I, I always love to talk about all of them, um, but I want to talk about the uh, cinematographer in this um, specific uh, dimension, uh, Samir Nimri. Um, he's very talented, and that was his first feature, as um, like like was mine. And um, he he he's able to work with whatever tools you give him to give like the best uh, result and. Um, somehow, you know, because he's, uh, he has this talent, we managed to shoot on that camera in a certain setup that later on when we went to uh, post-production to uh, color correction, we were able to get like the most out of the picture. And then when it was shown in cinemas, uh, people like, like uh, people who, are, who have the uh, knowledge or the experience we would never guess that this was not shot on film or on a, proper cinema camera, uh, was edited on a Final Cut 7, which, uh, you know, it's, it's discontinued now. Like, Final Cut decided to change their uh, software, like, completely. It's like a different layout now. So for those who edit, they know this. Uh, um, what else? Um, I think you answered the questions yeah. and I'm glad that you went into the specifics about the camera and the editing because I have a feeling the person who asked this uh, is a big yeah. fan of, of uh, such things. Um, I'm going to shift uh, gears again, uh, Fadi, and ask you this. You don't have to really elaborate here, but uh, it's a good question. If you would could do a remake of a classic movie, Arabic or non-Arabic, which one would you pick, and how do you think your spice is going? Your your take is going to make it different. Uh, before you answer, I just want to remind everybody about these black and white shots in the film, where we actually see like a whole bunch of Sharif look alike, uh, which actually are the same characters, only they've stepped back into the black and white golden age of cinema in Egypt. You know, uh, so. Uh, I, it's a very good question about if you sort of this bring, remake, whether it's bringing an old film into uh, the digital age or maybe vice versa. Um, interesting question. Uh, I'm I'm just gonna answer it spontaneously because like I would if I if I knew that I had this chance I would you know really think uh, very. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's there's a film um, you probably know it uh, Ramzi uh, by uh, or based on a on a musical uh, for Fairuz and the uh, Rahbani brothers and it was directed uh, as a film by uh, Yusuf Shaheen it's called Bayya Al Khawatim the oh wow the ring seller seller yeah yeah 
I love this film. I, I like every time I see it, I'm like, I wish I made this film. Like, I don't know. It's it's so um, probably also because I love Fairuz and the Hibani brothers and the music and 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 the way it was uh, done. It's so uh, out of this world. I don't know. Maybe that's not that's not usually the type of film that I would make because like I'm a I have a different voice i have a different tone but still i love it i feel like you know maybe now like just for the fun of it if i want to answer this question i think maybe like that's that's a film that i would love to uh kind of uh, adapt into this world like this today's time and see how how it can be made of course like you know we we all know that it's it's like um uh, you know there's re- realities around this and it's difficult and probably like the uh, uh, people who own the rights would never allow this, but it's just like... Well, if, the, if, the Rahabni, if the Rahbani <laughs> <laughs> folks are listening, uh, that would be an amazing <laughs> remake of a Fairuz classic, which I think also still stands the test of time. The colors, you know, set in a, in a village in Lebanon, the music's amazing. Mm. So anybody who's interested in what we're talking about, look up Fairuz's filmography, because Fairuz is not just a singer, but she's also been an actress partially uh, in, in musicals such as so here's a good question that's coming to you, Fadi, from two young ladies who are related. They're actually sisters. I won't reveal their identity, but I'm so proud of them because they're interested in the Arab world, in many aspects of Arab cinema, but also in the way gender is features in Arabic films. And the question here on both of their behalfs is, we really enjoyed watching your film, Fadi. Alf Mabruk written in Arabic. We are wondering how this film addresses gender roles in the Arab world. Um, of course, that's something that I will answer in kind of in retrospect, because I, can, I have to admit that when I wrote the film, I wasn't thinking of gender necessarily. I, I didn't have an agenda <laughs> uh, in that uh, direction. Uh, but of course, it could it, it might have reflected things that I believe in or that I want to say. Um, so um, and it, you know they seem to be experts in, in in this field. I don't know if this film can be labeled or can be described as a feminist film, but I think it is in the sense that it's um, it it. Um, gives, you know, like the female characters the lead. You know, we have uh, like an ensemble of uh, women in this film who suffered um, from one aspect or another uh, of our society and who kind of um, get uh, liberated or find, you know, their path um, to their own, their selves, you know, towards uh, the end of the story. Um, so, um, the, uh, I, I, I don't know, like, I, I think this is something that, you know, people who watch the film and want to, uh, kind of explore can, you know, interpret, but in, to, in my opinion, like when I look at it and I think, and anyway, I was asked about this, you know, like how the film features more women than men, I, I can't say that I kind of premeditated this. Uh, to be honest, but it's just that I felt like this is a story um, or this is, you know, maybe one thing that I like to uh, feature in the film uh, because it's, it's, it has a lead female character. I wanted to put more females around her and kind of talk about these um, women issue, which in my opinion, like when you talk about any uh, minority, if you may call it, in, in, um, in our society, it's not just about them, you know, like it reflects something about the whole society. So when we say, you know, women, women's rights or women's issues, they're not just women's issue, they're everyone's issues. Just like human, say, human rights issue yeah. too, isn't it? In, in some way, I mean, I'm so happy about this question because 
I mean, I w- it's so nice to have the director speak about his vision. But it's also interesting, Fadi, how the film can, uh, to me, for example, and, and I mean, you know, films are up to interpretation and each person is going to see it their way. But I thought it was very feminist in some ways from the way you portray the stereotype of the quote unquote spinster, the woman who, you know, hasn't gotten married yet and the way you play with that in a way where you're actually making fun of the people who make fun of a woman who hasn't gotten married by a certain age to kind of show that this kind of archaic thinking you know why can't a woman be empowered without being married why must she be and between the sister and, and what she went through and Mona Lisa and what she is going through. I think that's a very feminist voice we're hearing there. And the neighbor, the neighbor who is kind of uh, stigmatized by the society because she looks a certain way. And Bingo. Yeah. And of course, I don't want to reveal too much of the film in case people are watching this discussion haven't seen it, but wow, the way that ends up playing out, the neighbor who's, you know... Uh, I won't say any more. And then, of course, uh, you know, in the work in the workplace too. I mean, as you said, the character of Nafi. I mean, we see it in the beginning as she's horrible and she's this. But in some ways, isn't that what a lot of women have to do in a patriarchal society, so that yeah. they're taken seriously, so they become overly, you know, um, overly dominant or overly uh, cold but it's also a survival technique in the, in the workplace and you juxtapose that with some of the ways that uh, some of the male employees were looking at the female employees and finally the discourse that centers on the hijab I mean you know you've got her wearing the hijab in the public space but once she comes home and takes off the hijab we're made privy to another part you know so a lot of people who kind of stereotype women who wear the hijab as being a certain way in the public sphere thinking at home they're at home she could be the most athletic the most educated the most you know feminist uh, mm-hmm. person who chooses to wear the hijab and the, but so i think i think these three things make it an, an iconic work in terms of Thank gender you. uh but then that is just uh my opinion uh fadi good job Thank Good you. Good job. And I think these issues still have to be dealt with, not only in the Arab world, but as we were seeing it now, as you said, with this new spread of sort of going back to these conservative um, currents that are going on. I think women's rights are being defended all over again, even here. Uh, yeah, in the absolutely. West. So um, would you like to give advice to new filmmakers who may not have enough experience uh, to leave a footprint in the film industry? This comes from another uh, uh, attendee. Maybe put yourself back 12 years ago when you were trying to do this and how you know, it wasn't easy. Nothing was really handed to you. You had to write it. You had to, uh, with limited resources. Mm. What advice would you give a filmmaker, perhaps from in the Arab world these days? Um, I, I think, uh, like, I can think of two things. One thing that I always, you know, say in the first uh, class, uh, like when I, when I teach screenwriting, that's, that's the first thing I tell my students, which is that always think of stories that you know, uh, write about stories, you know, as we say between quotations of your village, you know, whatever that is, you know, like talk about your family, you know, your neighborhood, you know, your village, your city, start with stories that you know very well and your own stories. If, if, um, if you want, like, you know, your, your, your personal drama, your family drama, start with, with things that you know very well. Um, it, these what make the most authentic stories and the ones that people believe the most um, in uh, when you start making films, when you, when you try to even pitch these kind of, you know, films, uh, you know, to source to funds or to film festivals, they're interested in you as a filmmaker. And when you say, when you, when you pitch a story and when you say you want to make a story about something and they see that it has this, personal connection with who you are and what you uh, have witnessed in life, I think um, that's, um, that sells the film in a very um, good way. That's one thing. There's, there's a lot of things that happened in the last decade or so that made filmmaking easier. Of course, it has become more challenging because, you know, I think all over the world, uh, funding for film now 
has become much more difficult. But on the other hand, when you think about it, uh, the accessibility to, you know, uh, the technical things that were much more complicated and expensive before have become more accessible and more uh, available. Um, you can, you know, if you don't, if you feel, if you know that you don't have, you know, the budget, think or write for your budget, you know, write, write films now. I, I, I'm, I'm, um, I was keeping an eye on on some uh, productions that were made now, like during the, uh, like the uh, pandemic, uh, yeah, 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 the yeah. pandemic, and there are a lot of films that were written and were made, you know, with the limitations of space and time and and equipment, and they're great. So I think you know when you when you think about what you have and what is available to you and write stories for that, I think that. Um, uh, that's a great um, like uh, feature or privilege that we have now that we can shoot on our mobile. You know, we can, you know, we can create a story that that uh, doesn't go out of our you know apartment, um, and it still be uh, it can still be great. Um, Fadi, a couple of quick questions here. You know, you mentioned a director, I think, uh, Khan, right? And yeah. a couple of other directors. Uh, uh, can you spell the names? Because it seems quite a few attendees want to find out more about uh, these. Directors. You yeah. mentioned also, I think, you, um, um, what's his name? The, the Egyptian, of course, uh, 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 director. Three. Yusri yeah. Nasrallah, Yusri who Nasrallah. is Egyptian, right? <clears throat> and you also mentioned uh, you, uh, Muhammad Khan. Muhammad Khan. Khan. A K H A N. K N. Like yeah, uh, Fatat al Masna, Factory Girl. That's I think that's that was the last or the, one of his uh, latest films. Uh, and uh, I mentioned Pedro Almodovar. And Yusuf Shaheen, I think you mentioned. Uh, I haven't, but of course, you know, like. Um, I, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So uh, I, I I wish I could type in the chat to everybody, but I think when I type, it just shows up for the panelists. So again, Muhammad Khan, K H A N. You've got uh, Yusuf Shaheen, and also you've got uh, Yusri Nasrallah. Uh, Nasrallah. <laughs> It's, I guess not, try to yeah. try to help with the with the with the spelling. Okay, so um, let me uh, read this from one of our attendees, N M, and we'll be wrapping up soon. Fadi, I'll take it off you. We know it's you got up early for this. No, but, I um, enjoy, I, I'm 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 now all alert and awake. <laughs> we we, we uh, woke you up. <laughs> it's funny, you know, like I don't think of myself as a morning person, but like when I have to wake up early, uh, I realize that it's a great thing. Like, I wish. I, I, I am a morning person because like the morning is very productive and uh, energetic. Uh, so thank you for sharing your beautiful work is what NM says. I really enjoyed your film and, and I thought your portrayal of love was wonderfully nuanced. What are you working on now, Fadi Haddad? And what movies or makers inspire you today? So that is a great question. What is happening? I think somebody jokingly had asked, is there going to be a sequel? But then I thought about it, like, wow, where would Mona Lisa be today? Uh, yeah. But anyway, yes, what are you working on, uh, Fadi, now? There's, uh, there's not going to be a sequel, I think. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, but if, you know, like, I would like to have see, like, maybe not, I might not do, make that film, but I'd like to see, you know, other stories about, you know, other combinations that are not necessarily welcomed by the society, uh, you know, like maybe that could be like a sequel, like not necessarily about Mona Lisa and Hamdi, but like about, you know, uh, another love story in Amman. Um, but uh, what I'm working on now, I've been, um, I've been developing um, a couple of projects, uh, some for TV, TV series, some um, for film. I have, like I have uh, a feature that I've been developing that, that I, uh, worked on for the past couple of years um, and um, I also work with other uh, writers on on their projects I work um, I, I consult like I work as a consultant um, and I um, I help them uh, kind of doctor their script or 
uh, right. We on, should on mention that you're also busy as an assistant professor of film, TV, and media production yes. at the American University yeah. in Dubai. So, I mean, now yeah. you're teaching, and I guess that also will take from the time that you. Yes, would absolutely. Have had and I'm to... also I'm, I'm, I have my uh, academic career path uh, in which I'm researching the, uh, as you mentioned, the uh, Pan Arab uh, television series, and um, and that's that's also like that kind of links my work in the industry uh, with my uh, career in academia. Right, and, and, and transnational Arab identity, which I think yeah. is so important to investigate right now, reinvestigate, let's say. So um, I don't know how to thank you, Habibi, for joining us today. Thank you. And uh, Zach El Witri and Colin Hamill, I am saying your names out loud because these are the most amazing young men I've met in my 20 years at Stanford. They're such fans of cinema, of, of bridge, uh, building bridges between East and West, uh, big fans of your work, Fadi, now. Uh, and, and of course, I have to thank the Abbasi program, my gosh, for doing this film series or being involved in it, along with Stanford Global Studies. Um, you know, we're, hopefully when the next film is done, no pressure, Fadi, we can uh, host you in person at Stanford University. Hopefully we'll be uh, done with this pandemic. And then to the amazing people whose names I do see, uh, the attendees, and for, you know, since it's being recorded, I'm not saying the names. Um, I know who you are, some of you. Some of you I don't. Some of you I'm related to. And I should say, like, the fact that you came today means the world to me, as sure to Fadi as well. Uh, and also, Fadi, thank you so much for making the film available online. Now, I, 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 do people still have 24 hours to view it, Fadi, or before sure. you take it offline? Sure. Yeah. yeah, I just embarrassed <laughs> you into saying that because <laughs> no, I think no, anybody yeah. who came and, 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 and took the time to listen to us today and yeah. may have not had the chance to see the film, then the uh, link uh, through Vimeo will be available for another 24 hours so you can watch it. Maybe you want to watch it again. Uh, but that was very generous of you, Fadi, to, to do that. And I think a lot of directors are making some of their yeah. important work available in these times because honestly, these f films like When Mona Lisa Smiled are, give us hope and they take us away and it still stands the test of time today, Fadi. Shukran. Thank you. It's a, it's a pleasure. I really enjoyed uh, talking to you and answering the questions. And I think, yes, um, as you said, like this is an interesting time to, stay the least, to say the least. And I think uh, if I could, you know, uh, provide any, uh, any um, let's say, comfort in, in such situations, that's, the, that's the, the only thing I can do, really. And um, I hope, you know, uh, you you enjoyed the film and if you would like to watch it again or tell your uh, friends to watch it I'd be more than happy uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm always going to be uh, happy to uh, to talk to you uh, again Ramzi and, and maybe come to Stanford when there's a chance. Yeah, not virtually, but in, 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 in real life. Uh, shukran, everybody, for coming, for supporting Fadi, for supporting us, for supporting the film festival. Uh, I'm Ramsey Salty, in case you don't know. I've been teaching at Stanford for 20 years, and my show is called Arabology for those who asked. There's a website, there's a, on SoundCloud, you can hear the uh, podcast, etc. And Fadi, before you go, I just want to say that somebody shared in the chat a uh, link to uh, a Hulu series that they think you would like. So make sure you check that before you go. Uh, yeah. There was shared with all panelists. So thank you to BC for sharing that. And for everybody else, I'm going to say shukran, ending with HL, who says in Arabic, thank you so much. Al film jamil jiddan wal qissa aydan. ما شاء الله فصحى ممتازة من uh, HL uh, شكرا everybody I guess Zach and Colin have been patiently waiting for the meeting to end I guess I'm going to take um, 
the initiative here and the, and the meeting for everybody. Shukran to everyone who came. And please feel free to get in touch with me and I guess with Fadi if you have any uh, more comments or suggestions in the future. Uh, VB, Victor, shukran. Uh, the, my answer to you, VB, is Afwan. Okay, we did Thank it, you. Fadi. Shukran. We did. Thank you very much. See Take you. care, everybody. Take care. Bye. Um,